Hey, what's up everyone? Thunderbob here, and tonight I am doing a review for the new game, The Ascent. This has been described as a cross between a Diablo-style action RPG and a Cyberpunk 2077, but I feel like this does a disservice to all of those games, as The Ascent is really its own beast. To start with, at its heart, it's a twin-stick shooter. Though you level up, invest in skills, find loot, augment your body, go on quests, meet all sorts of interesting characters, at its heart, it's really a competent twin-stick shooter. And that's not a bad thing. The gameplay is one of my favorite aspects of the game. You play as an indent, or indentured servant, who's just arrived at a necrology on the planet Velas, a vast cyberpunk-inspired city. You've come looking for a better life and found yourself basically a slave to a giant, futuristic, heartless corporation. That, unfortunately, is the extent of the characterization for your playable character. That's one of the weak points of the game. You never really get a sense of what your character feels about any of the events of the game, why they join a particular faction or perform any of the actions that they do during the game. They simply follow the orders of whatever stack boss or corporate functionary gives them a command. The characters you meet along the way are more interesting, charismatic, and move the story along, but you never really get a sense of why your character is so important in the grand scheme of things. You're not the chosen one or some secret agent, it's not clear what your skill set even is, other than at the start of the game you're working in the sewers, and you quickly ascend to be an operative for several successive organizations. Imagine playing Mass Effect, except you're a mute and you simply take orders the entire game. You never ask any questions, you never investigate anything, you just go along with what everyone tells you. All of the quest-giving characters are voiced, so outside of the main story missions, most of them speak what appears to be an alien gibberish. There's also a nice compendium that you can reference that gives some backstory, definitions, and just helps flesh out the world. The core main story missions are all voiced and animated decently, and I enjoyed several of the characters in the game. The story is also interesting and basically asks the question, what happens when the corporation that runs everyone's life on Velas suddenly to disappear? Who or what will fill that void? And what will you do to protect yourself and your way of life? It's told through news reports, characters talking to you, and through environmental storytelling. The story itself, while serviceable, is augmented by one of the most interesting game worlds I've ever experienced. Velas is made up of several tiers, from sewer systems at the bottom to the dangerous and overcrowded Warren, until you eventually reach the more fluent upper levels. Imagine if the entirety of Final Fantasy VII only took place in Midgard. At the beginning, your map's pretty much empty, but as you explore each tier, it fills out into this sprawling, futuristic super city. The amount of unique art, characters, objects in the world is just astounding, and really sells the scale and believability of the world. The world is filled to their brim with things to explore and secrets to unlock, though most of the background is just set dressing and lacks much interactivity. I was constantly amazed at how beautiful the game looked and really feel like each frame of this could be a still from a cyberpunk movie like Blade Runner. I only wish the game gave you the ability to change perspective if only to get a better look at all the incredible art. I know there are some third-party tools that will allow this, but I would really love some kind of photo mode. The gameplay is a ton of fun as well, though it starts out a little slow. You begin with just a simple pistol, and the first few hours are slow to dole out new weapons, armor, tactical, and arc augmentations, which are the key pieces that customize your character. Tactical is basically things like grenades, turrets, and technology that you must deal damage to power up and use, and they're assigned to the G key on PC. You can also have two additional augmentations, and these are um, special abilities like laser beams, robots, jump jets, and other combat abilities that you assign to Q and E. These use a mana bar similar to something like Diablo 2, and you have to pick up consumables in order to refill it. There's also module slots that let you uh, increase your health and other um, passive bonuses. The loot does fall a bit short of a game like Diablo 2 in that it's not random. Every item that drops is always going to be the same, so there's no reason not to sell your duplicates. I ended up keeping one copy of every weapon I found just so I could get an idea of how extensive the items were in the game, and this is pretty close, I think, to to all of the guns in the game. 
There's also uh, armor, and the armor has stats. But again, this is not randomized. Every time I find this item, it's going to have the same stats. That's not to say the game is simple. There is a ton of room to customize how you play. You receive three skill points each level, which you invest in these skills, tactical sense, critical hit rate, weapon handling, aiming, balance, evasion, vital signs, body battery. And each of these skills also provide attribute points. So tactical sense and critical hit rate increase your cybernetics. And these attribute points impact how strong your augmentations are. So Neutron Beam uses motor Motorix to increase its duration. Spiderbot uses Cybernetics to increase the amount of bots that you spawn when you utilize the skill. There's also a ton of variety in the weapons. There are pistols, rifles, shotguns, flamethrowers, rocket launchers, but also a lot of these weapons have different damage types. Ballistic, digital, fire, and energy. And each enemy type will take additional damage depending on the type of damage type you're dealing. You also uh, can stack armor with these different types of defenses. Armor also has additional attributes, things like upper body, internal, critical hit rate, that feed into your attributes and your skills. You can also upgrade each weapon in the game up to 10 times. They use these different tiers of currency. You can upgrade to level 5 using the first currency, up to level 8 using the second currency, and up to level 10 using the final currency. You get plenty of the first two. That last one you only get enough to upgrade maybe two or three weapons in total. The gameplay is perhaps the strongest part of the game, but because of the lack of random loot, a limited amount of post-game content, don't expect this to be the next Diablo where you sink hundreds of hours into it but it is an extremely fun 20 to 30 hours by the time you complete the main story and all the side missions. Beyond the gameplay, the graphics and audio are top notch. I had everything maxed out and could reach 200 frames per second with DLS as set to quality, as long as I kept ray tracing disabled. Ray tracing unfortunately reduces FPS by nearly 100 and introduces some stuttering into the game as well. There were also issues at release where the Windows Store version lacked DLSS support ray tracing and difficulty settings that the steam game had though this appears to have been fixed the synthesized music fits the tone of the game perfectly and could easily be the soundtrack for cyberpunk movie there's also some bugs in the 25 hours or so i played i only crashed once there are issues with side quests uh, some of them will indicate like you could beat it at level two and it leads you to an elevator that you don't actually unlock for another 10 hours of gameplay. They need to better identify when these missions are completable and how difficult they actually are. And the quality of the side missions in general are much lower than the main story mission and mostly just filler fetch quests with few exceptions. You also run into situations where you accidentally wander into new areas and suddenly you get one shot by an enemy 10 levels higher. I wish they better identified the level of zones to avoid this issue. I would really recommend sticking to the main story mission for the first several hours as it gradually levels with you and keeps pace with you quite well. The ending's a bit disappointing as well and doesn't really have a satisfying conclusion, but it does leave a lot of room for future DLC or sequels. Overall, I am extremely pleased with the game. The fun gameplay and exceptional world building come together to create a really special game that I highly recommend to anyone who is a fan of action role-playing games, twin-stick shooters, or cyberpunk fiction in general. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this review, I do have an entire playlist of reviews for different new releases and content for things like Diablo 2 Resurrected, Cyberpunk, Resident Evil Village. Why don't you check some of it out if you enjoy it? Why don't you subscribe? I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you again, and have a good night, everyone.